In my previous videos, there were some questions about how to build a bifiler coil the proper way, how to connect it, and how to build a high side switching uh, MOSFET module. I will give the information in this video as a start off of the new series of videos explaining my new circuit. First, I'll give you the information of the bifiler coil build, how to hook it up. This wire is uh, 1.5 square millimeters. It's made of pure copper. It's got a PVC coating. So this is nine meters, 24 centimeters and six millimeters long. It is all about the increased capacitance. The increased voltage difference between the two windings is what it's all about. Because this voltage difference between the windings that are so tied together is related to the capacitance of the coil. Now the capacitance isn't really that big. It's like 450 picofarads. It's not only about the picofarads, it is also about the voltage. If you put 10 volts over this coil, well, then nothing is really stored in it. But when it's resonant, the voltages easily can go up to 600 volts, peak to peak. And then you're talking a lot of energy, together with that half uh, nanofarad of capacitance between the windings. And so it's a flux capacitor. Yes. Remember that beautiful movie in the 80s, the, the ba Back to the Future uh, movie, where the dog had a flux capacitor? Well, this is it. It is a flux capacitor. Why? Well, it has increased capacitance. So it's basically a capacitor. And it has flux. It has inductance. It is capable of producing a magnetic field due to the windings. So it has both. It is and a capacitor and an inductor. I can hear you screaming already. It's not a capacitor, it's a coil. Well, you're right, it is a coil. But keep in mind, when this thing becomes resonant, it does store energy in its electric field, in its dielectric field, so I should call it, because the electric field, of course, is the combination of magnetic and dielectric fields together. The dielectric field in this coil is rather strong. It can store a lot of joules per second when it's resonant. Let's count the windings here. That's a good one. Start here. One, two, three, four, 25, 26, 27, 28. Let's put it down and measure it. First, the diameter. What is it? It's 20 centimeters. Yeah, 20 centimeters in diameter. I stripped it. Now I'm gonna hook it up as it is to see how much capacitance there's in this coil. And I said around 450. That was my prediction. It's opened. So basically now we have two windings on top of each other and because they are so closely matched, they have capacitance. And that's what the bifiler coil is all about. 465 picofarads. That is a rather good value, I think. Now we're gonna hook it up like Tesla intended. So we've got a red side and a white side. And we got an inside rim and outside rim. I'm gonna take the 
white the top layer and the red from the center so this is the red from the center and the white from the outside rim and I'm gonna hook them up this way we've got a bifiler Tesla pancake coil I'm testing again and it says it's 0.4 ohms and 0.21 millihenries. Now we have the information about how to build a bifiler coil. Next up is the information about how to switch on the high side of the coil. How to switch the power supply on and off instead of low side switching, which means switching on and off the ground, which is usually done. The difference is that low side switching is producing a positive back EMF and high side switching a coil produces a negative voltage back EMF and this is what we need and therefore we need to build a special circuit, a high side switching module. To switch on the high side you need a, a special circuit. You can't just put voltage like a pulse generator on a MOSFET with its gate, drain and source is being switched by the gate voltage relative to the source voltage and in this way it can switch a coil this is the power supply that is being switched over the coil by the MOSFET and the MOSFET is a IRPF460 to make that gate switch relative to the source voltage I'm going to make a circuit that is grounded on the source. So this is my relative ground. Here is going to be my battery, 12 volts. That 12 volts, uh, I'll put a capacitor over it of let's say 2200 microfarads. And that is going to provide power to my gate driver IC. The gate driver is the IXDN604 and the P is the socket version. It is grounded again on that source voltage. I advise you to put a capacitor over this power supply as well. A small one like a uh, 0.1 microfarad ceramic. The output of that IXDN604P will drive the gate and the gate will have a resistor to limit the current of 2.5 ohm. And what I did was put a ultra fast diode over it so it can discharge really quickly. The MOSFET switch will really quickly open the circuit and that's good. That's what we want the fast acting switch for high frequencies. Now, this gate driver IC is needed because the frequency, uh, the, the pulses are really high in frequency and are generated by my pulse generator. The output is directly connected to the input of that IXDN604 gate driver. And for protection I have a Zener diode to ground here so it won't blow up. This is a 14 volt Zener diode. Pulse generator again is grounded on the source voltage. My module is a 5 volt module so I need something to provide it with power so I have a buck converter. 5 volts 2 amps positive, negative and you get a 5 volts out. And this pulse generator is a 50% duty cycle square wave. And that's basically it. I'll show the parts and uh, make it a little bit more visible. So the parts. A battery. This is my 12 volts, uh, 7 amp hours lead acid rechargeable battery. Just use any ordinary uh, uh, 12 volt battery. I use 12 volt because it switches the IRPF 460 MOSFET gate to source voltage when it is around 12 to 14 volts. Then we have the buck converter. 
Believe it or not, this is my buck converter. I put a little socket around it. It's really tiny. It has a USB output and just a two leads in. The two leads are connected to the battery. It's provided with 12 volts and it pumps out five volts, two amps. That is then hooked up to my USB cable and that USB cable is powering my square wave generator. It is hooking up to my, it's a bit, bit of a mess, but that's what you get when you're experimenting. This I see, and this is my uh, gate driver I see, the IXDN604. So bug converter is powering the pulse generator. Pulse generator generates the square wave into the IXDN604. And there is a little zener from the input to ground. Uh, here's the capacitor that stabilizes the voltage. And then here, the resistor and the diode. You can see it here. It's on the gate of the MOSFET. Why do we do this? This is one of the easiest ways to switch a coil on the high side. And this produces a negative back EMF that is also known as a inductive spike. If the gate is high, the switch is close to the positive power supply and there is a current flowing through the coil. This produces a magnetic field inside of the coil and once that gate is going low again relative to the source the switch is opened really fast when the switch is opened really fast there is a negative back emf produced and that can easily reach minus 500 volts which is the limit of this MOSFET, the IRPF460. We want this impulse. We will make use of it. And I will show you in future videos what we can do with it. That's it for now. Donations are always much appreciated because this work is all open source, meaning that I will share all the information that I gain with the community that is interested and that is you. You can fund this open source research by giving a donation on my PayPal account that is listed below in the description of the video. If you have questions, you can do so in the comment section below. Please subscribe, like and share this video and turn on notifications if you want to get a personal call when my next video is out. Thank you for watching and good luck on your rebuild of this circuit and its rather unique effects. See you next time.